Good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time of day it is that you're watching. Welcome to another week of New Life Community Church, Home Church. It's been another interesting week. I hope that by the time that you're uh, watching this, that um, that wherever you are, you um, are safe and have uh, electricity. Um, I am uh, one of the thousands that have been without as I record this. We still don't have our electricity back, and um, um, yeah, it's just it's been a it's been a challenge. What a year that we have had, um, and I know that. Um, you know, we are, God is, God is getting us through, um, and that there are many out there, um, who are, are struggling, um, well beyond just, um, you know, a t temporary loss of light. Um, and, and I just continue to pray, um, for each and every one of you that the, the Lord continues to strengthen you, um, throughout your day, throughout your week, no matter what it is that you're going through. Um, in God's perfect timing, um, he, um, he has set into motion, of course, the, um, the worship team has been working on a new song, and within that song um, are the um, some lyrics from uh, a, an old an old hymn, um, and uh, that's uh, so that's been on my mind and it's been in my heart and it's been part of what's um, been getting me through this week in particular. Um, and I'll um, I'll recite the the first verse of that for you. Um, many of you may recognize it. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot. Thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Whether good times or bad, um, it is well with my soul. Because I know that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Um, and that's that's a well-known verse from uh, Philippians. Um, and uh, But if you look back to the verse that comes before that, I'll, I'll read it for you. It's Philippians 4, 12 through 13. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secrets of being content in any and every situation. Whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Whether you're in a season of good times or you're a season in a season of struggle, remember that our help is in the name of the Lord who made the heavens and the earth.
working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working Christians believe that the Bible is God's book, God's word. We believe that through many writers, over 40 of them, and over thousands of years, three or four thousand years total from start to finish, God revealed himself to humanity in the scriptures. The scriptures are the story of God's interaction with his creation, that he created all things, that he relates to all his creation, and how we, his creation, relates to him. You've read this book a lot or a little. Maybe it's, you're very familiar with it. Maybe you're just getting familiar. But I want to ask you a question regarding how much or with regard to how much you have read. What do you think is the point of this book? What do you think is it all about? If you could summarize it in a short statement, how would you do that? I want to read how Jesus did it. And in Matthew chapter 22, starting at verse 34, 34 to 40, if you want to pause the video and find your place there, if you want to just listen along or take time to open your app, here's what Jesus says in summarizing, in capturing the whole purpose, and meaning of God's revelation. Now, Jesus faced uh, contention often, and he was drilled and grilled often by the religious leaders. At the end of one of those intense sessions, Matthew records this. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. They were putting their heads together to come up with the best question they could give him. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. That's how Jesus summarized the whole story of God, the whole revelation of God. Now, well, you have heard it taught, I have taught it, I have believed this, and I have understood this, and it's fairly common that this is the summary of God's law, meaning the Ten Commandments. But for the last couple years, I've really shifted my thinking on this, and several people I've been reading and from past and present really understand this better. 
This is not a summary of the law. It is the law of God. These two commands don't summarize the Ten Commandments. Rather, the Ten Commandments are specific ways these two commands can get lived out. There are 613 laws in the Jewish scriptures about diet and sacrifices and social relationships and all kinds of subjects. Those are details that come from these two great commands. That's why Jesus said this is the greatest and the second is like to it, meaning it's matched perfectly. You know, one side of the coin is like unto the other, meaning they don't look alike, but they're related and you can't separate them. That's what Jesus means, that this, these two commands go together. And as soon as you look at one, the other's there. They are together. And so these are not a summary. They are a summary. They are a compact statement of the meaning and the purpose of all the stories in this book because they reveal that the, the law of life, the, the law that governs everything, has two parts. Love, treasure, honor, respect the Creator, God Almighty. That being who is, is not like us, He's in His own very different, and yet we were made in His image, and therefore we find our completion in relationship to him. And second, treasure, honor, respect, love other humans in the same way that you honor and respect and love yourself. These two commands are what Paul called in Romans chapter 8, 1 and 2, the law of the spirit of life. I want to have you look at the passage or at least note it. In, in Romans 8, chapter 8, 1 and 2, Paul comes to a point of clarity, clarifying the therefore. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Now, those who are in Christ Jesus are those who have believed that he is their Savior through his death on the cross. He is their Lord through his resurrection and his ascension. He is our Lord and our Savior. Those who believe that are said by Paul to be in Christ. We are hidden in him. We are included. We are connected. We are in union with Jesus Christ by that confession. And he says there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and death. That's Romans 8, 1 and 2. The law of the spirit of life is the law of contained in these two great commandments. The law of life is that we are to treasure, honor, respect, and obey, and delight in the creator God who made us. And the law of the spirit of life is to treasure, honor, delight in every other human being. That's what we were created for. When God created us, he made us to be beings that treasured the almighty creator and treasured other human beings. Imagine a world like that. Imagine a day where that was the dominant thinking and feeling and convictions of our heart, which would then lead to our actions. You see, you can be legalistic about the Ten Commandments. Every one of us can keep all ten of them. But we wouldn't keep it necessarily from the heart of love for God. We would do it so we could earn God's favor. We could think we're saving ourselves. That's legalism. Or we could... Not steal, mainly because we're afraid of getting caught or we don't want them to steal more from us. Self-protection. But if we were keeping those commandments from the law of the spirit of life, we would, we would never think of taking another person's goods that they worked hard for because we wouldn't want that. Instead, we would want someone to protect our goods, to protect our reputation, to be sexually pure toward us and around us. And so that is how we would act. You see, the true law of life, of the heart of the human being, is to love, treasure, honor, respect, and obey the Creator. To, to also love, treasure, honor, respect other humans. 
this is a big deal. This is a deep creation principle. This isn't just keeping religion. And it's an awfully high bar for us to, to reach. In fact, it's humbling. Uh, you should be feeling overwhelmed by that. Wait a minute, I can't do that. That's right, we can't. But that's what our new life in Christ is about. We admit that we can't keep this law. We admit that we don't want to keep this law. But, oh, God, forgive me and give me your spirit to change me. And that's the moment of conversion. That's the transformation that happens in the human mind and heart. You could say the essence of, of true conversion is that we go from people who hate God and hate our neighbor to people who love God and love our neighbor. In fact, in the Heidelberg Catechism, question and answer number five says that exact same thing. When it tells this law, can we keep this law? No, because by nature, I'm prone to hate God and hate my neighbor. That is brutally honest. But when we come to that point, not admitting we've broken some or all of the Ten Commandments, but when we come to the point of saying, oh, creator God, I have not treasured you. I have not respected you. I have used your name in vain because you know what? I don't care about you. That kind of a confession is like when you come clean with some friend or some work associate or some family member and you say, you know, I just never really liked you. That's why we don't get along. But I've come to understand how important you are and how good you are. And I want to say I'm sorry. That's that's called a confession. But to God, it's to say, I've never treasured you as God Almighty, as the maker of my life and my soul and the one I was made to spend eternity with. And, and I ask you to forgive me. And I believe that Jesus alone paid the debt that I could not pay for not honoring and respecting and treasuring you, Almighty God. That's the moment of conversion. When you begin to treasure God and then immediately what happens is you feel treasured because God loves you. And then the second part of conversion is when you say, and Father, I, I haven't loved my neighbor. I compete with them. I'm nice to them if they're nice to me. I like them if they're likable or if they like what I like. But boy, you can write off most of humanity. That, called hatred for others, that is also part of conversion. Oh, God, change my heart. So now we have it. Here's the summary of what this book is about. Each human being on the face of the earth was created to treasure, honor, respect, obey, and love God. And the same with every other human. You and I look around. That's not happening. We don't have hearts like that. For those who are in Christ Jesus, we've been freed to pursue this new life, to live into the spirit of the law of life to live not according to the flesh but by the leading of the Holy Spirit to have us treasure God and treasure others not just others that we like but others because they're God's creatures that's a transformation of the heart that's a big load that's an awful lot so what can we do I just have a few actions just a few things for you to think about actually three to think to pray and to act different some of you old enough to remember when Apple really was on its rise and Steve Jobs came up with that first big uh, advertising campaign that, that made people think differently about Apple was think different. That always bugged me instead of think differently. No, think different, a different way to think, a different, uh, to think about different angles. I want to challenge you to think differently, think different about this command to see them as the essence of the law of life, as Paul summarized in Romans 8, 2, that this is the spirit, the law of the spirit of life. This is the law at work in life, to love God and love our neighbor. Everything in this book, Jesus says, everything in this book, the law and the prophets, that means the scriptures, hangs on these two commandments, flows from them. The second action is to pray different, to pray, to pray, Get honest. Not, oh God, forgive me for this net, but pray different. And I'm going to suggest to you Psalm 139, the last two verses, 23, 24. After thinking about how deeply God knows him, probably David writing this, he asked him, search me, oh God, 
Know my heart. Test me. Show my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me. I've shared this a couple of times before. I'll do it again. That means show me my inward weaknesses and failures and ways that you want to mature me and show me my outward behaviors because, you know, we're all blind to the way we we out, outwardly behave. We're also hiding from our inward self, our innermost being, as Scripture says, our heart. So show me my heart, how I don't love, treasure, honor you, O oh God, or my neighbor, other humans. Show me where I don't love, where I don't keep these commandments. Test me so it's obvious. You see, the testing isn't to approve of me. The testing is to show to me the results and the measurement of where I'm at. Back in school, it used to bother me occasionally when a teacher would give a quiz or a test. And for some reason, probably a very difficult life at that point, they didn't hand back the results. What a demotivator, because I didn't know how I was doing, not in passing class, but with the material. How, how do you know how you're doing if you never measure it? That's what testing is about. So it's saying, God, show me my heart. That's a courageous prayer. You better be ready for the ugly because we all have it. But also, don't be surprised if you've made progress and own it and be content and happy because the Lord's been working in you. You've been working in you. And then the second is, show me my outward behaviors. So ask God to reveal. That's a different prayer. Ask God for clarity on that. Show the truth of your heart. What a huge breakthrough that is in life. And finally, examine. Examine your own heart. In other words, besides what God tests you for, Practice the bold, courageous action of honest assessment. In AA, they call this take, you know, an inventory. Oh, if you really know what that's about, if you have any friends who've been in the program, you know that is brutal honesty. Take inventory. Look at your heart, just alone, not to condemn yourself, not to beat yourself down, not to take on false guilt, but an honest assessment. I think between the Holy Spirit revealing and testing and our work of assessing. You put those two together, and then you know where you stand, and then you can finish with, lead me in the everlasting way. Isn't that an awesome prayer from Scripture? And then lead me in the everlasting prayer, Psalm 23. So, the two greatest commandments are one, together. To treasure, honor, and respect God. That's what it means to love God. And to treasure, honor, and respect others, every other human being, as if... You are treasuring, honoring, and respecting yourself. These are the big challenges. This is the depth of the spirit of life. This is the law of the spirit of life. This is the law of life. And so I want to pray for a moment and ask you to join me. Lord Jesus, you have given us your word. I have shared just a few thoughts here with my brothers and sisters. I ask, Holy Spirit, that as they bow in prayer right now, your Holy Spirit would rest on them. Fill them because you said you would fill us. You said you'd give us the spirit like living water. You said he would be like fire cleansing us. You said he'd be like wind and, and filling us. Come Holy Spirit and rest on each one of us. Examine us. Help us to examine ourselves. Show us where we are accomplishing and growing and maturing into loving you and loving others. And show us where we fall short so we can make better, better progress or we can bend to your will and follow you as you lead us in it. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you love us with an everlasting love, that you've washed all our sins away, that you've removed them as far as the east is from the west. And now we ask again for more strength, for more love for you and others. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill us with the spirit of life, the law of the spirit of life that we might live well with you and well with others and so give you praise and thanks that you so richly deserve and we so greatly need. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Each week, you have been joining us in this time of worship. If you email us and give us some info, some maybe feedback or ideas, please do that at, at the info at NLCC address. Thank you also for your faithful giving. We ask you to continue that, of course, by dropping it by the church or mailing it in. Or um, if you're attending small church, then you can drop it there as well, and you can always give online. 
Thank you for your faithful giving. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the church said, Amen.